Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Woo! Yeah, buddy, you live. Dr. Drew. That's right. We are doing, at least for in my era of Loveline, Dr. Drew, the very first Loveline in front of a to live be fair, audience. To be fair, it's the first one in about 22 years. 22 years. Something like why, that. You know, why wait any longer? Right. We have a live audience here at... Uh, at the world famous K Rock, our flagship station of uh, Love Line, and it's all brought to you by Crazy Ex Girlfriend, premiering tomorrow night on the CW at 8 p.m. And uh, y you blew me away, Dr. Drew, with a huge kind of plot point of the show that it actually takes place in West Covina. That's what I understand. She uh, follows her, her ex boyfriend, who she was obsessed with. And this is actually a pertinent point to the stuff we've been talking about lately. It's mostly the males. Yeah, that but it's usually obsessed. vice versa, exactly. Historically, it's been the women, but now it's all the males that get obsessed about women and can't let go. In this case, it's a young lady that can't let go and follows her boyfriend from New York City back to beautiful West Covina. Palatial West Covina, where, where uh, my head was used to open a door <laughs> at BJ's. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't remember anything. You mouth it off a little bit? I'm sure I was. but At the cops? Well, no, 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 no. Uh, there's a Hooters next to it. I don't know oh. if it's still there, but they're, like, oh, it course. shares a parking, like a parking square with a Hooters, this yeah. BJ's. And so a lot of the, young, the fine young ladies that work at that Hooters would go drink there after. Ah. And I went there with some young ladies... And um, and I I don't know what happened after that, but I just remember the big bouncer smashing my head against the uh, door and then throwing me out and catching air. Is that the one where they also the cops got you and pushed your face into the cement, or is that a different episode? I think that's different. Okay. No, that hey, I think by that, the way that happened that happened often. Oh. But I but that BJ's in West Covina is also the place where when I was driving on the two ten freeway and the girl and I were like exchanging glances in a car. Like and then I <laughs> and and I was I, I was like roll down your window I'm on the freeway yeah. going east on the 210 and and I was she's like where I was like, where do you live she's like I'm going back to my house in West Covina I was like oh yeah, yeah. so I followed her and I banged her right there I never talked to her again right there in the, like the parking lot or the you know driveway no, of her house she had, she shared a house with another chick yeah. and I like saw that chick there and hey we, by the way you can watch us live go to krock.com see the live feed you can check that we're actually filming this whole thing so check it out there you can go to drdrew.com too there's a link there also oh yes let me just throw this pen on the ground drdrew.com wedged right between oh. penile enlargement studies and what are you talking about HPV all what? that fun stuff. Come on now. So our open forum in honor of crazy ex-girlfriend, Dr. Drew, yeah. what's the craziest romantic thing you've done for love? And we have an audience filled with people who have done crazy romantic things, right? And they will be speaking to us about that. Yeah? Yeah. I, I'm trying to think if I ever did anything, like, crazy romantic. And I, I'm th pretty sure the answer is no. <sighs> oh, oh, come on now. I know one thing. You have it blocked for your memory. Well, well, I, I, you sent a young lady a, a song. Is that romantic or stupid? Y both. Yeah. But that's, I don't, re I honestly don't think that, I mean, there's plenty of young ladies right here. Summarize it's it not in, in romantic. a sentence. What did you do? You met a girl over the summer. No, it was, it was spring break, first off, How and I was in you? Chicago, and it was one of my dad's business partner's daughter. Yeah. Daughters. And she was exactly my age. She was really beautiful. And I was, I mean, I was young. It was like sixth grade. And so I would, like, write her letters and stuff. This is back before, the, the, you know, the Internet. I know, I'm old. And uh, I wrote her, the, like, these letters, and she seemingly was receptive. And so she kept telling me while I was in Chicago that her favorite song was that Brian Adams song from the, <laughs> from the Kevin Costner uh, homo uh, d guy with the arrows movie. What's a uh, Robin Hood movie? Robin, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, everything I do, I do it for you. She kept telling me, she's like, that's my favorite. I listen to it on loop. I have like, the CD single, I have the cassette single. I have the cassette. I just listen to it over and over again. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to rock your world, baby. So I sang it into like a boom box from another boom box playing the song. <laughs> and I like sang over it and recorded it and sent it to her. Sent a cassette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, like in the mail? Yeah, like, oh, exactly. Like, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not only. Wait, first of all, is that romantic? Audience? Oh. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you. A little, little polite applause here. I thought, I, I really did think it was like super romantic at the time. But she, um. It's supposed to be a crazy romantic thing. Now, to be fair, it's a crazy romantic yeah, movie. No, that right, so crazy. go ahead. That so was happened? crazy. What happened? So, <laughs> I didn't hear from her for a long time. And then we called on the, called each other on the phone and I talked, I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> we're talking for like 
10, 15 minutes before I like have to get by this painful, obviously, this elephant in the room. I go, did you get that tape I sent you? She's like, yeah. Um, I had a sleepover with like 10 girls and we listened to it over and over again and laughed at you like <laughs> nonstop. And I was like, oh. And so I tried to be like, oh, that's so funny. Ah, oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all a joke. But I was destroyed. I was destroyed inside. <laughs> Yeah, it's and awful. then and then the mustachioed succubus took my virginity, and right. I was a sexual deviant from there on out. There you go. All right, let's get let's the show started. Uh, Ashley, hello. Hello. Hi. Hey now. Hi. Um, I called last week and told you about how my son's father doesn't brush his teeth. Your son's father does not brush his teeth. Yes. No, wait, no, you, but your son's, son's father teeth. doesn't brush your son's teeth. Yes, okay. Right, yeah. yes, yes, yes. yes. And he, you, ha- oh my. And he had, he had the son, you guys hadn't really figured out custody yet, but he had the kid part half the time right. anyway. All right, go ahead. Right. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm having still some issues getting over him because um, I have to interact with my son's father, but he says such mean things to me. Um, like yesterday, he told me, well, I tried to explain to him that he hurt my feelings by doing something that was inappropriate. He made a sexual pass at me and then, you know, told me that, well, it was my fault that he made the sexual pass at me. And if I'm there, then he's going to try and have sex with me anyway. Cause Ashley, Ashley, did we not tell you to get an attorney? Um, I don't know. I think so. Well, it, that, yeah, it should go at this point, go without saying. I mean, you have a child. No, we with were this guy. very clear that we could not help you. You had some really serious legal stuff to work out, not the least of which is inappropriate sexual contact that you don't want, unwanted sexual contact. And he's contact. a lot older than you, right? Yeah, he's 45. And, and you're 25. All right. Yeah. You, have, you don't have a leg to stand on here. He's not going to listen to you. And he's just going to continue to think that he can manipulate you because of your age and because of the position he's in. And he's uh he does well for himself, right? He's like an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm totally. Ruined. He does something else with your kid, right? Was it the bedtime? Yeah, he wouldn't put him to bed at the same time. Yeah, he thinks that's unreasonable. He's like, oh yeah, and today he let him walk on a hospital floor barefoot. That's not so bad. Okay. Kids, kids' feet are disgusting. Anyway, trust well, me. Right. My uh, daughter's feet look like Tom Sawyer. They're always like <laughs> black with charcoal and bum, bum flakes from Venice she, Beach. She lives like a feral child like yeah. you, though. Uh, well, listen, she told me that I was disposable, and that's why I'm calling, because it really hurt my feelings. Listen, wait, 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 wait. this is the same guy that abused you. Yeah, and also, you're, you're, you're by definition... The most not disposable person in his life. You are the mother of his child. Like there's there's nothing you could do that makes you disposable. Hey, we, we, you could be a is, lot of things. You could be the biggest bitch on this side of the Mississippi. It doesn't matter. You're one one thing for sure is not disposable. This is the precisely the same issue, the same point we were at last week when we said you have you are not indispensable. You're in fact you are indispensable. You're not dispensable, and you need to get an attorney immediately. And you disregarded everything we said. So what are we going to do here? Why should we go around again and give you more advice that you're going to disregard? You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't know that you were specifically saying for me to get an attorney. Well, that's the only person. That is truly the only person that can help you now because there is a lot of good laws, especially here in California, that are going to make sure that he can't pull this crap anymore. Right. I mean, there's been domestic abuse, unwanted sexual contact, custody issues that need to be worked out. Come on now. Let's do this, okay? All right. All right, Ashley, you do that. All right. All right. All right. Bye. All right. Asalaamu Alaikum. I totally ruined the screen already. Uh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, Make it work, Drew. Man. <laughs> it's not a disaster. There we go. Woo! All right. Let's talk to uh, Jane. How's Dick? Hi. Hey, how's it going? We're What's good. Happening? We're sitting here in front of about, I don't know, a couple dozen people. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh, They're yeah. going to tell us about their crazy romantic things they've done for love. Open forum. About half an hour. Thanks What's up? to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock on CW. It, hang a second. It's weird not having microphones, headphones. Is isn't it? it? I, it's freaking me out a little bit. Uh, all right, get used to it. I'm just saying. Right. It's just weird. It's just so Go weird. ahead, Jane. <laughs> they may have to put some on. <laughs> Jane's, so Jane's all fed up. Go ahead, right, Jane. I'm sorry. What's up? <laughs> I, I have a, a moral question, I guess. Moral question. Good. Yeah. Uh, my husband and I have a, a boyfriend. A what? A boyfriend. Okay. And he's married. Immoral. 
Next question. Well, unless, unless his wife or his husband has signed off on it. No, it's a secret. Okay, so it's not, we're doing. It's, it's not just immoral. It's, it's hurtful, right? It's destructive. Yeah, to, yeah okay. It's potentially a big deal. Okay, so what do you want? Um, to, what's going on here? I get the feeling, just feeling, that you got more f- feelings for this boyfriend than you intended to have. Am I right? Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I that, thought it was just going to be a physical thing. Right, but you're falling in love with you're, you're falling in love with the boyfriend. The you got this guy stuck in this threesome, whatever it might be, with now you developing feelings, and the wife out crap out of luck, S out of luck, we might say, uh, I, I, you know, this is a meltdown, right? This is why these things yeah. don't work out. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably what's up here. It's just that uh, there was a, a, when we hooked up, we've, we've all been friends for a long time, and we didn't know it was going to go down this way, but you know how it goes with the... Uh, I, I do know how it goes. That's, that's why I don't recommend these things, because feelings emerge in these boundaryless situations that you don't anticipate. And uh, th- things, you know, it becomes... Listen, it's hard enough to have a relationship with one person. Can I get an amen to that, let alone a- adding a third yeah. in or a fourth? Oh, for God's sakes. I, 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 <laughs> you know, it's not like when we bring people into therapy, we go, oh, you know what you need? You need another you need to you add, need, it, add, add another person, person into this relationship. Make this work. It, so what? It, I guess the bottom line is, do you want especially to s- someone who's cheating on their other spouse? Oh. You know, it's not like they pulled in like a like a like a Chechen rebel right. that is like wandering right. the streets. Off, off Craigslist. I offered you dick. <laughs> do you do you uh, want to salvage your marriage? That's the first and most important question. Yes. Okay. So you that's and your husband. Issue. Say it again. I don't think that that's an issue. We both have feelings for this third party. Well, well, cool. how is that not an issue with you salvaging your marriage? The fact that you guys have mutual feelings romantically for another person. That seems like I a pretty big issue. I don't see how that's a deal breaker. Well, then not you're not going to save your marriage. I'm not saying it's a deal breaker. We have A. I'm not you, trying to save my marriage. My marriage is a okay as far as I'm concerned. Then what do you want to the do? Guy. Then what do you want to do? I don't know. Stop banging. Okay. I want, bang- to, okay. I want both of them. I want to keep them both forever. Then go do that. I mean, why are you calling radio station? Why are you calling? Is there a problem? Well, yeah, there was a. He had a situation recently where he was separated from his wife, but then they got back together. And I feel like maybe now is the time to step out of the whole thing so I don't damage his family. Right. Okay. Next. Do you agree with that? How could I not agree with that? You're gonna, you're not, you're gonna, re, you're going to refrain from harming how many people? Uh, four. Four people. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for not hurting four people and destroying their the lives of the kids. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're welcome. Now we got you have a husband. Now here, here's the deal. <laughs> you have a husband that not only is in love with somebody else, his sexual orientation is now changing, right? Oh, no, it was, I knew this was already on the table before we got together. I think that's, you probably got to work that out before you put the ring on it. Okay. You're like, oh, right. by the way, I love man butt. Okay. You can't, like that doesn't, <laughs> ha- that doesn't whatever progressively come along. Whatever you're into, man. All right. Yeah, I, whatever you're into. I mean, as long as nobody else is getting hurt, but now. Yeah, but that's the thing is that pe- plenty of people are. are. Plenty of people are or else you wouldn't danger. be, on, plenty of people are or else you wouldn't be on the phone with us. Right. Okay, so just do what you need to do. I mean, uh, clearly your intentions are, are, are out there and you're not wavering. You want to keep both these people in your life. So just make sure that this other guy handles his business both thoroughly. Uh, no, g- like she thoroughly. doesn't get to keep both of them. She doesn't get to do that. The one guy's going back to his family. We're saving four people's lives from destruction. Fine. Good. Move on. Yes? Okay. If she wants everybody. You don't get everything you yeah, want. I mean, okay. can't always get what you want, I guess. Yeah. Uh, 1-800-LOVE191 is the number. Give us a call here if you have any question. Again, that number is 1-800-LOVE191. We are in front of a live studio audience here at the world-famous K-Rock. All thanks to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend premiering tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on The CW. My friends, this is Love Line. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it.
Can you, uh, can you guys just show up uh, every night and just clap? Even if you, you don't even have to pay attention to the... You don't have just, to stand though, in the studio, though. It yeah, doesn't work it just makes us so feel well. better. Uh, you, you have to deal with Anderson's dog and my flatulence. Yeah. But besides that, I mean, it's, a, it's a pretty nice environment. Yeah. Uh, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the number. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend premieres tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on the CW, and they brought us this lovely live studio audience that we are doing this show in front of. Let's and, go to, and this audience, uh, hang on a second. This audience is bringing us some questions during the open forum. The open forum, yeah, is some stories and questions. Craziest romantic thing you've done for love, and uh, so far the romantic gestures have included music, which is appropriate to the Crazy Ex Girlfriend show because it's a musical. Yeah, just saying. Oh, uh, Drew, you, I mean, that's right up your alley. Oh, right up my alley. Uh, hello, Lily. Hi. Good evening. Good evening um, to you. Um, I'm ca- I'm calling because um, at my workplace, I work at a bank. And sometimes I, uh, uh, when I'm helping customers, their sex is ambiguous and their profile says a different name. So I just want to know how, how should I go about addressing, you know, if they're the person on the profile without coming off as disrespectful? So wait, 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 I love this question. It's a great question. What, what do you mean by on their profile? She means they so look... Go ahead. Well, like when they slide their ATM card, it'll say, like, for example, like John Williams. Mm-hmm. But w- there's a woman standing in, in front of them in, the, in my window. Yeah. Right. So this is this is the whole. Air, what's her name? Lily? Lily. 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 This is the whole domain of preferred gender pronouns. Right. Right, everybody. Correct. Preferred I don't gender pronouns. Miss or Mister. No, of course. You you want the. Do you, do you so stay away from it. I, I say go do what's best for your job. If if the name John comes up, say, I you know I I want to be well, do, well maybe but it, it says John here is that you, the m- name that you go maybe by. your bank or your the way your system operates need to specify a preferred gender pronoun. Maybe this has to be I, sort I of. Do- I do have to say their name a few times in the tra- during the transaction, yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, when you're talking about, like, customs or a bank or something like that, you just go by the name on the ID. That, yeah. I, like, that, I mean, because it's too, it's a, even a small discrepancy, we're talking serious problems. It's listen, not, you're not a, you're not I, a gym teacher. And I think the way to do that then is, okay, so you use what's on the pronoun. You, you use the pronoun that's appropriate to the name on the card that she's working with. And if it seems inappropriate, the person is in any way affected by it, go just say, what is your preferred uh, gender pronoun? I, I'll be delighted to use that. Okay? Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. It's a good question. question. Well, it's a very good, good question. question. It's a I, modern, it's a current question. The um, kid's just out of college. That's all they talk about is preferred gender pronouns. But isn't there also... It could also be it or they... Hmm? I, I actually spent the weekend uh, at Ellis Mania out in Vegas, and um, Jason has a good fair amount of transgender friends that yeah. were, were from friends of the show and stuff, and I was in the green room talking with them. And they all seem to believe that there is un- there's an understanding that when you transfer genders, that that comes with a certain level of awkwardness in some situations, like going to the bank or... You know, if if although you have, if you remember on the HLA, if you're young enough and you still go to school, yeah, yeah, and there's roll call and they haven't changed and you l- clearly look female, right. It's like your, your parents. It's like your parents giving you a name that has three different pronunciations. Right, you have exactly. to Adjust every time and and uh, look. Uh, remember on the HLM program, we did a tra- couple transgender shows and Vanessa came up and said, "I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to misstep." And people reacted angrily to that. Yeah. So it's not about not wanting to misstep. Just go look. Just be really straight and really direct. What is it you prefer? That's yeah. it. Don't don't just say I'm an ally. That's it. Uh, hello, Tristan. Oh, uh, hi. Hi. Um, you guys live. You live, you live. more. <laughs> yeah, obviously I'm not used to this. You're 19. Uh, <laughs> huh? You're 19 years old. Yes, that's correct. You don't sound a day over 71. <laughs> okay then. Um. <laughs> Well, yeah, I have a weird voice for a guy. So. Oh, you're... And, no, never mind. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you don't sound a day over 12. Check. What's going on? So um, I'm writing a paper regarding... Um, well, it's MPA, but the point is I'm wondering what um, effect it would have on a kid's psyche to see, like, um, nudity or, like, fake sex scenes in, like, a movie. 
Six what? sex scenes, yeah. is that what you said? She said like fake sex scenes. Fake, fake sex scenes. Yeah. Or well, seeing, said. seeing sexuality, seeing explicit sexuality, and seeing nudity, or I would say are three different things, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think we actually had this conversation where I said, I don't think, if, like last week we were talking about, I don't remember at where. But about kids in showers, right? And I yeah. was like, I'm pretty sure a 12, 13-year-old boy, it's, all, it's fine and dandy to see like a playboy. Right. But seeing their classmates naked would rock your brain or, like or, that would and, and under 16 like explicit sexual experiences can be a little shattering too much but like are you talking like a major motion picture like a sex scene or you mean like full porn uh not porn just a movie like <laughs> So like the talking, movie you'd see in a theater. And, you're, and when you say nudity, on th you don't mean nudity like in the home or something, like children sharing a shower with family members, that kind of thing. Oh, of course not. Just uh, Of course not. How dare I? I didn't mean that. Well, no, because, I mean, the, the, the reason this, this Drew asked that, we were dealing with that last week. Yeah, is that, I mean, there, nudity comes in many shapes and forms, yeah. you know? Uh, I, the bottom line is I don't think you're going to find a explicit or quantitative answer to your question, but I will direct you to a website that's really good on all this stuff. It's centerforhealthysex.com, okay? Center, okay, center, all right, yeah, buddy. I couldn't find it. Centerforhealthysex.com, you got but it. But mostly, you're, it sounds okay. I mean, yeah, it yeah. For, well, uh, what? It's just <laughs> he, he's, he's trying to split hairs. When you start splitting hairs, you will find stuff that's problematic. So. Speaking of splitting hairs, yeah. that was the first thing that stuck in my head when I saw my dad's dick. Hairs? Like for the first, I never forget like the first time I saw my dad's dick, my dad's dick and I was like, oh, okay, because like everything on your dad is bigger when you're a little boy. Keep going. So his dick was bigger, and I was like, okay, like, but I'm it looks just I'm like I'm still trying to understand the splitting hair part because everything was the same as mine, but bigger. But yeah. he had like hair. I just remember thinking like, why does my dad's dick have a beard? <laughs> I remember like I seriously like went back to my room, and it wasn't as if he was brandishing. His his fine balzinis and and, and you went dick. back to room and, and contemplated. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Just beard. like that. Mm, That's all I did my whole life. <laughs> what? I just go back to my room and sit and go. Why is it? And why would that possibly? Okay. You know what I was thinking about the other day? What? In your room? Think of your dad's balls? Well, no, I was thinking. I was walking back from the ATM and a bird crapped like, like right in front of me, like Lucky's man in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Like bing. You better explain that reference. And, uh, All right. and I'm perfectly fine not having anybody yeah, understand what sorry, I'm talking about. I knew what you meant. Um, and I was thinking about in like half a million years ago, imagine when pterodactyls dropped bombs. <laughs> no, seriously, like, do you think there was creatures destroyed by a pterodactyl poo? There had to have been. Right. Eggs, like at a least eggs. A eggs. pigeon just bothers you. Yeah. Even like a giant, what's the biggest, like a hawk? Well, how do reptiles, what do reptiles create when they poo? Well, it's not a reptile, it's kind of like a bird. You're right. It's yeah, a giant so, bird, yeah. but it was the size of a school bus. Yeah, Imagine yeah. it's poo. Like it, yeah. it could kill. Yeah. All right. That's all. all right, that's all I was thinking. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let's talk to uh, Davin. Davin. Hey, guys. Port. hey. Hey, what's up? Hi. Uh, you guys live? You live. You live. How was Vegas this weekend, by the way, Mike? <laughs> what? All right. right, let's go. Spit it out. Didn't you go to Elvis Vegas? Okay, anyways. Um, my parents are divorced, and uh, my mom, I, I moved out of my mom's house when I was a freshman in high school, so that was like three years ago. And um, whenever I go see her or anything, and like, let's say we're out to dinner or whatever, and she, like, we buy, like, she buys dinner. She goes, when are you going to pay for this? Like, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. And so we recently just went out for dinner, and I could afford to pay for her. And she goes, no, it's fine. You don't, like, all this other stuff. Like, you don't need me to, like, you don't have to do that. I figured, okay, she's just being polite. But whenever I ask for her help in something, she always says she doesn't, like, I don't need her which I don't understand, and I need to understand how to, like, deal with that, because I'm... I, I, I couldn't hear a lot of what he essentially, said. Essentially, yeah, well, you, yeah, you got marbles in your mouth, but essentially, oh, you, you, you went, your parents went through a divorce, and you had one place of residence till you were a freshman, 16. and then you moved out. Yeah. Your, your mom's in a weird yeah. spot. I mean, that's all. She's but, flipping but she, out. But She's, when he asks for help, she won't help, and when he offers help, she won't take it. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Yes. And what kind of things like, do you ask? Sounds like a female. What, uh, what kind of things do you ask for help about? Um, for example, like paying for college and stuff. Oh. 
Just just that? Just your education? O- listen, offering to pay uh, for a steak is a lot different than asking for money for college. There's a little, there's yeah, like six, uh, three orders of magnitude difference there. Yeah, uh, college, um, she offered to buy me a car when I graduated, and so I brought that up. She wouldn't do that. Um, and then uh, that, that's pretty much it. It's just like big financial things like that. Okay, if she offered to buy you a car, then yes. say... Take that money and pay for my college. What if you were to say that? Okay. Okay. Here, here's the deal. Bottom line, you need to understand that everybody has a lot of weirdness around money. Money means more than just what it represents as an article of trade. It has all kinds of emotional content, and it's very much in, in sort of infused with whatever happened to her growing up. And she, there's values and experiences and ambivalence and traumas all around money when she was growing up, and all that gets transmitted to you. Especially... When you're a child of divorce, you know what I'm saying? Like when because you're there's all kinds up. of issues of guilt and resentment all tied up in that as well. And why isn't your dad paying for that? And so there's layers and layers you probably don't know about. So I, I would maybe you know you're 19 now. Maybe it's time to have a real kind of like, hey, I'm about I'm entering adulthood. Let's get real about this. You know, I, I, let's let's just try to talk honestly about. It. I know it's something that must be difficult for you. I know you have lots of feelings about it, but I, I got to get on with my life. So I need your help. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, he's, I have. Uh, Thank you. Um, Thank you for doing that. 1 800 L O V E 191 is the open number. Form, right? The open form here. is what's the craziest romantic thing you've ever done for love? All in honor of our sponsor for tonight's live in front of studio audience episode. Crazy ex girlfriend premiering tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on CW. My friends, give us a call. It's Loveline. Yeah, welcome back. Loveline in front of a live studio audience the way it was designed to be, Dr. Drew. Designed. Designed to be. And, and uh, you can watch it live if you go to krock.com or drdrew.com. Thank you. Watch exactly what these folks are enjoying here tonight. Um, and this is all brought to you again by Crazy Ex-Girlfriend premiering tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on The CW. That's Monday nights, 8 p.m. on The CW. Oh, they've got a Twitter handle, which is at CW underscore Crazy XGF. CW underscore Crazy <laughs> XGF. Did I get there it right? Go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You got it right. Uh, we will be doing a live open forum here uh, with... Integrating questions and stories from the studio audience, Absolutely. Which, uh, which will be exciting. Let's We've talk got our to, subjects uh, lined up. Let's talk to uh, Allison. Allison, hi. hi. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Thank you. Assumed. Um, so uh, when my husband and I first got married, we both wanted children. And it, that was just kind of, we both agreed. And lately he has said that he doesn't want kids anymore. Uh-oh. And has he had trouble I at work? Feel, well, at work. he's unemployed now. Ah, there well, you. maybe that's, that's why, why, yeah. The only there's a couple reasons why yeah. girls Men. don't want to have kids. There's usually only one reason why guys want to not have kids if they initially wanted to and it's cuz they ran out of money. Or and they, they don't they see don't prospect feel, of making more. They don't feel secure. Yeah. Right. So do you think this is something that like would I should like bet on it's going to change when he does get a job. Or how, how old is your husband? How do I know this is like authentic? How how old is he? Twenty seven. I, I feel say, like he still doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, I would life. say yes. yes. I would say you'll probably change. And 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 does he give you any kind of explanation presently? Um, he just kind of says, "Well, you know, we we don't have any money." Right. All right. There it is. Listen. There it is. He he needs to have a secure position in the world, and then he'll be feel better about having kids. And that's a, it's a healthy thing that he feels that way, right? Okay. Yeah. And I, I just don't know how much to push him to get a job because I know he's, he's kind of depressed. A lot. You're his wife, right? Yes. Okay, push him all you want. Yeah. Keep on yeah. pushing, don't stop. Yeah. If, he's gen- if he's depressed and can't function, get him treated. But if he's just sort of feeling beaten down, your job is, your, I mean, I'd like to see you. Build him up. Get him going. Be the, be the coach. Okay. All right? Okay. All right. All right. Good luck to you, to you and your husband. Uh, it's got to be rough. Uh, did you guys hook up Mallory? Oh, it, where is Mallory? Oh, yeah. Where is she? Where's paralyzed Mallory? She's supposed to be here. Yeah, because my, my friend Victor is going to have sex with her. No, explain. I don't think everyone heard the, the thing. We took a call from a young lady uh, last week who's paralyzed. Um, but she still has fu- sexual function. Yeah, she's, and and she's she, sort of coming back. She even start to walk a little bit now. She finds it hard to just have an F buddy because guys 
genuinely feel sorry for her because of her condition. So they want to treat her nicely and they don't want to just have random sex with her. But she wants random sex and she can't convince guys to just bang her and and like she, she did not date one her. guy remember one yeah. guy and then we got your friend lined up and and uh, we really genuinely felt but she's like i just want i need that that connection intimately and i'm having a lot of you know and, and i can't go on tinder and these dating sites because i you know either i don't mention that i'm paralyzed and show up on the first date and it's like oh thanks a lot or <laughs> i put uh, I love walks on the beach. Yeah, uh, except just I kidding, walk. I can't walk. <laughs> you know, so it's like no, no one pays. No one pays. So I was like, um, my friend Victor will bang you, and just come and I'll take pictures. She's of supposed. You to, she said she'd be here tonight, we, and I, I was getting mad at you for that Victor wasn't here to consummate, but he'll get her anyway. He'll, he'll yeah, he, he doesn't care. He'll, he doesn't he'll care what's understand. going on with her. He's like, I'll bang he'll her. There. And uh, but she's not here. So if she's hearing this, she needs to come down here. So. And by the way, that's what I said. This is like perfect for. Single Mike love line. Do you remember, like, back in the days when I was a single man, like, even without a girlfriend, we couldn't dream of something like this. I would, like, no listener would ever be like, I just need dick. Yeah. Now, of course, I'm spoken right, for, right. and I can't do anything about it. Right. I uh, can't use you for such ex yeah. escapades. Right? Hello, Veronica. Fantastic. Yes, hi. Hey, now. Hi. I would actually, if, um, if this is any reconciliation at all, I would like Thank Dr. Drew. We're in <laughs> please, please don't go, don't talk so fast. We can't keep up. And this is not going to be Jesus a recovery. Are not you paralyzed? A... No, I'm not. That's so rude. What What's going on? What's up? I want to thank you for um, make me making me think twice. Getting married at 21. Okay. I was super f stupid. Whoa. I heard a big um, f bomb there, Anderson. <laughs> he has to put her on hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we have this delay, and so when somebody cusses like that, we have to wait for the delay to come back up. And that wasn't even. She because, didn't hide that one. Right. She because because the, the classic thing is, if you put them back on the air again while the delay is building up, we no longer we don't have a delay, and you'll go uh, stop with the. Uh, the uh, f bombs. They go what? Oh, oh, s. I said f, and now that goes off on the radio. Are you there, it's Veronica? <sighs> no, not yet. She's still <laughs> that long? Oh God! It takes worse than a hockey penalty. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh -huh. See, and this is why people are always like, "What do you care, man? 2015. What do you care if people cuss on the show? Because it brings. It's a gigantic speed bump." Hello, Veronica. She might be drunk too. Check that out. Are, are you we, there? We, we, we no, got, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> you better hope she is. No. Okay, that wasn't listen, me. we appreciate it. I, actually, the nice I did call. not hang up on her. That I, what, what, what did it say on the, in the little blurb? Dr. Drew, I want to thank you. No, no, but that's what it said in the... For helping me. No, no, what did it say in the little description? I'm telling you, that's no. what it said. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Hello, Shirley. Shirley? Hello? How's Laverne? Hello? Yeah. Hey there, Shirley. What's up? How's Laverne? Hi. Laverne and Shirley. Um, sorry if I sound shaky. Yeah. This is Are you nervous? Are you nervous? What? Are you nervous? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, well, don't be. So okay, there's only like half a million people listening on the radio, and now there's a live audience listening that's judging you totally with every word you say. So don't be nervous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well... Um, something sort of been going on between me and this older man who happens to be my mother's husband. Oh! Kind of logical, but oh! yeah. Wait, uh, uh, can we just go, hold on? Best description of her situation ever. Not I'm banging my stepdad. I uh, I'm having this thing with an older man. <laughs> And uh, he kind of happens to be my mother's husband. Awesome. Okay, uh, how long has this been going on? Um, I would say about a year now. And how long has your mom been married to him? Uh, maybe a little bit longer. <laughs> maybe like a year and a half, two years. Oh. Yeah. I um, happened early on. Um, well, I mean, what, he, sincerely, like, what's the solution? I mean, what's the end game? 
I, is it is no, it do you no, tell your mom I'm and just, no i'm just so confused right now and he says he's like in love with me and uh, that he'd do anything see my mom is older than him oh how old is how so, old is this dude he's like 36 how old's I mean, your mom disgusting 40. guy 36 how, how old is she 40 she's like four years older how old how's bianca because like 38 yeah um listen this is a disaster right you know that yeah is I there know. is there someone you can talk to a therapist or something well my my huh. we got to get her some help yeah uh, no no but uh, my my question is is like there's two ways to go there's you guys never talk about it again and you and you stay the f away from both no. your mom and the no or you have to come no, forward. Like you can't like not tell really them. No, but there's no dilemma in between because so I'm sort of pregnant. No, no, come on, no way. And no way. He just keeps telling me he's in love with me, and I don't know what to do. I don't think I don't people. Know if I well, here's did. the deal. Uh, How far along are you? I, um, I'm about three months. About three months? Yeah. What are we going to... I mean, what, uh, what... Well, this is like calling up and saying I have AIDS, okay? Or, or I'm going to kill myself. Right. Uh, like... So you can't, you can't F around about this. So if, if this is a bogus call, I, I hope... I say, no, I say we have no choice but to treat it as if it's real. Correct. And, Correct. And because, my... because it's that serious. Because it's a total meltdown if it's serious. If it's bogus, I'm giving you one chance to come out with it. But I have to take it totally seriously. Yeah, and I just don't know. Should I like leave everything or? No. What you should do is get a therapist. You need somebody in your court. You need somebody who is professional who can back you up. Who's to, who's doing your prenatal care, for instance? I'm sorry. What? Who's doing the prenatal care? Uh, <laughs> Nobody. I don't That's... know. Yeah. I don't know. How no, were you diag how were you diagnosed as pregnant? Oh well I took a test and I went to the doctors and Okay. And who was that who who what kind of doctor was that you saw? I went to my gynecologist okay. and I thought maybe I was All right. And did you tell the gynecologist how this had happened? No. Okay. That's where you need to start, right there. You need to go, and you need to you need to get a for sure a therapist, and you need to get referred by the gynecologist who is responsible for you and your pregnancy. Now, that individual yeah. is responsible for you. That is the professional you go to to assist you with this situation. Which and he is or she would recommend a therapist. She right? or she is is required to help you. So you need to go. I put, gotta put her on hold because we gotta go. But the, I, I hope to God this is well. I hope it's bogus, actually. But you, you have no, you know, the, where you go, you start with the gynecologist, you get, a, you get a referral to the therapist, and you move from there. And that person will help shepherd you through this. You cannot do this alone. You cannot do this alone. All right. Okay? Good luck, Shirley. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. My friends, it's Love Line. Yeah! yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Love Line Live. Live Love Line. Well, we always broadcast live, Dr. Drew. Yes. But live right now we're on a live stream and in front of a beautiful live studio audience, may Absolutely. I say. Absolutely. Beautiful. A very attractive you group can, of people. You can check them out at krock.com or drdrew.com. You'll see the stream there. And uh, it's all brought to you by the CW's new show, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, premiering tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on the CW. That's Monday nights, 8 p.m. on the CW. And in honor of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, we want to know, what's the craziest romantic thing you've done for love? We will mesh the in-studio uh, stories with you, the callers. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. It's time for the open forum. Wow. It's time for you to give us your opinions and insight. Here's tonight's open forum. Yeah. <laughs> The open for him. Jess's got the mic. Come on down. Yeah, yeah beautiful Jess. Let's start, let's start here in the audience. Is Seamus somewhere to be found? Where's Seamus? There, there he is. is. That's a this. man's name. Like no, one, like, no one without any grit is named Seamus, you know? That's, that's awesome. All right, Seamus, Seamus, Seamus is the you. one that had the crazy backing on his phone. Yeah, and a beautiful head of hair. Yeah. A beautiful head of hair. Seamus, 
Thank you. You guys live. Thank you, you sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, my story, when I was 18, my freshman year of college, I met a girl named Victoire from France. Oh, uh, yeah. a mutual friend. And was she was she super hot and smoked uh, yeah. a ton of cigarettes and yet somehow her she breath never stank? She actually didn't smoke. That what? Was, that was the thing that blew my mind. French woman that doesn't smoke? I, but she was super hot, actually. Okay. That part was true. All right. Um, what happened? We, I, she was going to leave in a week, and we spent a good amount of time together, and I completely fell in love with her. Uh -oh, and nice. she left... Now, and, she, when uh, you say she left, back to, back to France, okay? I back hope the story doesn't end with you flying to France and oh, things no, not working exactly, out. That's exactly oh. what it is. No, that's awesome. So it's, that's so, awesome. Wait, wait, you heard what so I said, two things years not later, working out. Go ahead. Two years later, uh, we had been in correspondence. We had been writing letters to each other, and I decided to fly out there with my friend. As a surprise? No, she knew okay. I was going. We, wanted, right. to, we wanted to travel. We went and did like a backpacking trip. We went all yeah. over Europe. That's right. hot. And uh, we ended up in southern France. She lived in this 500-year-old estate on oh, the Côte d'Iron. Oh, oh, nice. Drew's uh, going <laughs> to push right through his pants with a boner. <laughs> oh, she must have been so rich. She, it was this ridiculous home. She had a wonderful family, and uh, she put us up for a few nights, and I had my 20th birthday there, and we did all these crazy things. We rode bikes through the hills, and it's uh, part of the same roads that like Tour de France is on. It was the most ridiculous thing. I thought I was dreaming the entire time. And uh, finally, the night that we, um, before we're going to leave. Then you met her boyfriend? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. But um, the night before we were going to leave, I finally was like, I have to say something. And I went down and I basically put myself on the table. Oh, no. Nice. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sea Haven. Sea Haven from the crowd with the bell. Woo! Just give this man a responsibility. Yeah. He takes it seriously. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and then she said, well, we just live too far away from each other. It's <laughs> Which is, and I, I mean, like, a fair, well, I know, a fair just, answer. I but did she at least give you, like, she gave you sympathy American uh, 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 no, no sex? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. That part. <laughs> no sex? No. So oh. you're just, she just lives in the back of your head, like, always thinking of the girl who slipped through your fingers? Uh, a little bit. All right. How long ago bit. was that? Uh, I, I have my 20th birthday. I'm 22 now. Did you, and did you just end correspondence at that point? That was it? Pretty much. Yeah. Oh. Pretty much. You could rekindle uh, it. You know, you could... <laughs> just saying. Just saying. No, it might be out of, might be out of the picture. She's... Okay. All right. That, I mean, well, that, 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 that I have to say, that is, that is beautifully romantic, yeah. though. The idea... <laughs> that's, the, that's the prime age to do stuff like that. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you, you, you don't have the means... By any means, that could I could have worded that better. <laughs> when you're 19 to do that, but you have the, you have the brain to do it. The brain. Like, <laughs> if I was to fall in love with a Parisian girl yeah. right now, and she's like, "I'm moving back to France," I'd be like, "Oh well." Yeah, yeah. And that, there's the end of that That's relationship. That, yeah. I got a life, you know. Like, yeah. What am I? You know, because you just like you never. That's the best part about youth. Is the, the romance. Is yeah, idealism. like you could, you would follow through on something that is it seems completely unreasonable, yeah. but it, yeah. it works for your heart. You there know. You go. Like moving uh, to West Covina. <laughs> Let's talk to our own Diana Vandycamp. Oh, she is on the phone. Diana, hello. Diana? Oh, wait. wait, oh, wait we Diana, better, are you there? Diana, we don't, you're in the control room. We need oh, to... hey, gentlemen. There, there you are. My Thank fault. You. My fault. All right, go okay. ahead. Hey, now. Okay, so a, a couple of years ago, I had a crush on, like, this radio host who's a great guy, and so I decided to play uh, a rhyming game with him every night for about a year to try to, like, woo him with my mad rhyming skills. Yes. Sadly, it did not work. Huh. But, like, we're great friends to this day. That's true. So you did, but I think, I mean, Diana, when you were trying to woo me with stinky pinky skills, <laughs> I, I think, I mean, I had always been spoken for. So it's not like you, my heart didn't at times belong to Diana Vandycamp. It's just that, you know, some, some scraggly whore had already taken it. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. I love her. Uh, but, yeah. No, I was talking about my ex-girlfriend. No, I know, of course. Talking about, my, talking about my wife. All right, Dan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Got any um, stinky piggies for it? Oh, okay. No, but, no she, but she made me think. What? Do we should do that tonight? In, if you guys, can you guys play? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got some players. Yeah, all right. At least like ten, face six, seven minutes of it. The right? last, the the last part of all the right. show, we all will right. play in studio Stinky Pinky. All right, all right and fair enough. You guys get to see me sing the, the theme song oh. live, which is... Really the only reason to play that game. Uh, we'll take a real quick 30-second break. We are here with a live studio audience at the world-famous K-Rock. 
best gosh darn radio station on the planet. It is the flagship station of Loveline for 30-some years. Wow. And we are here with a live studio audience, all thanks to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend premiering tomorrow night, Monday nights, 8 p.m., only on the CW. Like I said, a real quick 30-second break. We'll be right back here on Loveline. Yeah, we are here with a live studio audience here in the world-famous K-Rock. Seamus, by the way, we heard your story. Do you speak French? Oh. Did you even, like, because... Uh, he needs a mic. We can do it. Hello. Hold nah, on. just scream to us. We don't care. No, I, I, we Jess, can hear you. Jess, give it to her. Give it to him. No, I I tried to, but by the time we did the trip, I was not fluent. Right, but I, have you ever thought, like, I'm going to get way fluent, and that's my ticket. Go I'll back. rock her yes, world. I'll fly back. But she spoke English, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no I, did, I did. That, that's where I your romance like ends, is learning <laughs> a new language. Good All right, uh, where's Kevin? Kevin, you have a story. Oh, there's Kevin in the front. Kevin, tell us. Your the craziest romantic thing you've done for love, uh, right in front of your girlfriend. You live? Yeah, you thank live. you. Um, it's not that crazy, but it is crazy romantic. Um, oh. So when I was like 14, my crush and I would like uh, we'd listen to Loveline at night and then we talk about it in the morning. Yeah. So um, she had swim practice early for a certain like a two week stretch. This is she back during the, this is during the Corolla years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like 98, I think. Uh, nice. Um, and so I record. I stayed up all night for like a week, and I recorded all the love lines on tape cassettes. Like I listened and like paused it for the commercials and <laughs> did the whole thing. And then I brought them to her and put them in a little bow and gave Look her like four cassettes. And uh, yeah, and then she became my girlfriend. Look at hey that. now, that's good. <laughs> and she was a swimmer, so she knows she had a nice tight bosom. Yeah, yeah. Um, she did eventually dump me for a better looking Kevin. Actually, like <laughs> he was it? also named Kevin. Yeah. Was it Kevin yeah. Durant? No. 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 Was it? Was it Kevin Fetterline? No, no. It was a cool name, though. Kevin. Well, I shouldn't say it. Though. Yeah, don't. Well, no, what? Screw cool. that guy. What's his name? Knight. He's a bitch. <laughs> right? Who's with me? Kevin Knight's a bitch. If you're listening, Kevin Knight, you're a bitch. But look, you upgraded. You've got a beautiful girlfriend yes, right here. Yes, yes, it turned out all right. Okay, so. That better be your girlfriend, not like your sister, or else <laughs> I can't tell her. You know, Doctor Drew. Yeah. Someone was begging me to talk about this very topic, uh -oh. and uh, oh, oh, oh. he hails from Boyle Heights. Rudy oh, Cisneros. Don't tease me. Don't tease me. See outside? Does he know we're doing this? Come here, Rudy. Come here. Rudy, come in. Oh, my hey, God. Hey, what's up, fool? Oh, hey, Rudy. Dr. Drew. Oh, hey, what's man. up, studio audience? I want to say, like, like Rudy. te quiero Rudy. mucho. What's up, Doc? Hey, Rudy, say hi to the audience at home. Hey, what's up? KROCK.com. I don't know how I like them. The internet's worse, but, like, you know, what up? I like uh, live right here, live so, and direct, Rudy Cisneros. So Rudy, you, you've done East some... East Los, what's so, up? Rudy, so, so tonight's show, all these people are here to support the TV show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, right? That's yes, right. Well, I had a Monday Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Well, Her I name was Little Sloppy. She was from El Monte, and, like, that, that girl was crazy, dog. Like, um, she was, uh, she was from... Uh, like uh, down down in South Mexico, like um, the Yucatan Peninsula. Oh yeah, yeah. Not Honduras, fool. Uh, like um, like way down there, like uh, like, uh, like Cuernavaca. Oh yeah. And like um, but she worked for like she was like a like a hit a hit man for like the cartels when she was a little girl because they would never suspect <laughs> right. a little girl coming. And then, then she was shotgun do domes off, and then like she got kicked out of the country. And I was dating her, you know, back in the day. You know. and, and, and did you, now let's, let's put her aside for a second. And I want to talk about crazy romantic things you've done. Well, I imagine tell you, fool. Some, you did some stuff for Sad Girl. Yeah. That's right, dog. Like, uh, the, the, I remember I, the when meth, I got the meth in her eggs every morning. That was pretty romantic. Nah, we were not supposed to talk about that, according right, to my right. parole officer. Right, but right, she did right. lose 140 Sorry. pounds, dog. Sorry. Well, and like, but 55 and pounds, that was her left no, leg that she cut off. That, her leg didn't wear, measure that much, dog. She does no nalgas, no like queso or anything. Cause well, she cut it off. I know, but like I was put like this is what happened for like um my wife, sad girl, I love her so much. She was okay. getting a little fat, dog. So like, but I didn't want to tell her because I didn't want to like hurt her feelings. Right. So I started putting meth in her horchata. On, right. And like, but I wouldn't. I'd be like, shh. Like, oh, let me go get you a glass of horchata, huh? Yeah? And then she started drinking it, and then she lost like crazy weight. But she thought there were bugs in her leg, and she cut it off. So, so there you now, go. She's so got a go. wooden leg like so a pirate. So what other romance? <laughs> What other romantic things have you done for her? Nah. Or for somebody? No, well, this is for, like, the, my only and, girl, and you girl. I love quick, her so Rudy, much. Because I want to talk to some more of these, these audiences. I members. made, when I got out of the pen, you yeah. know, I was gone for, Which like, time? 14 years. Not my oh, big, the big stint, one. Yeah, like, yeah. recently. Um, you know, she threw me a party. Well, I might cry. Sad, dude. I might oh, cry, dude, dog. Like, you know, she made so much of me, dog. I know, I know that. And, like, I just wanted, I took, like, um, I made, like, a cake, you know, because I, I, I was a chef in oh, prison. Yeah. So yeah. I made her chef? a chef. A special cake, dog. You know, yeah. I used to work in the kitchen. Yeah. And it was like a little model of her. 
Wow. But like it was all they like you know it was fun. Had two legs it was like too. angel food cake. Yeah, dog. yeah. It, was, it was real nice, you know. And I made it look just like her with the frosting. Yeah. And then I put like a like a soccer goal around every like her panocha and her yeah, butt yeah. and like and her mouth and and it said it said I love you so much every hole's a goal. Okay, Rudy, Rudy Cisneros, thank you, Rudy. And then I I'm massaged her, every hole's massaged a goal. her in the bu- bubble bath, dog. Was every hole, every goal's a hole. Every, every hole's, hole's a goal. goal. We'll have to put that on a Hallmark call. Hey, yeah, it. like um, yeah. hey, aren't cowboys hey. crazy? Yeah, I was thinking about that because you ever watch cowboy movies and you think about their teeth? They're not that effed up. Well, they, that in some of them, but well, not in the Hollywood version. That's right. Food, yeah. They should have no teeth, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, all right. That's all yeah, I want to say. It's all blacked out from tobacco and stuff. All too. right. Go Raiders. All right, Rudy. Thanks, Dick, buddy. All right, Rudy Cisneros, everybody. Mike, get back here. Where's Blake? Huh? Blake. Where's Blake? Blake. Blake, stand up. Blake's 11 feet tall in a Hawaiian shirt. Here comes Blake. Is that your girlfriend next Hi. to you, Blake? It's my wife. wife. Your wife. Nice. Wife. Very nice. Yes, thank you. How long have you been married? Uh, just over a year now. All right, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You guys look very happy together. Yeah. You guys have uh, gigantic, uh, like, you know, NBA center children someday. <laughs> you and day. your Yeah, okay. So what was the craziest thing you did for romance? Uh, my wife put up with me for a long time while we were dating, and it took me a long time to get around to propose. I had the right. same problem. Yeah. It was seven Really? Years. Oh, it took me forever. We dated for seven years. Seven years? Yeah, that's that was a long time. That's what I did. What, did, you, did you think of proposing, like, halfway through, and then she was just, like... Yeah, but then you guys talked me out of it. Uh, well, how old were you? Uh, when I proposed, I was 28. That's, oh, so yeah, right. you waited. Yeah, you waited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, 21. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's our fault. I'm sorry. She can, she can, she can blame you. Okay. All right. Okay. Do not but blame anyways, Blake. Uh, to, to propose, I, it, it was a big buildup and all of our friends knew that we wanted to get married, but we ended up not telling anybody that we were planning on getting married. I ended up contacting all of my family and making up this huge elaborate lie about my sister's art project, and I needed to take headshots of all of my friends and get pictures of everybody. (laughs) That was totally bogus. In reality, I was preparing a big video in which I showed to my now wife before I proposed to her. Look and at that. So how, I mean, how much? That, that's a lot of effort. Do you have to lot, edit it together, the whole thing? It was a lot of effort. And I got two guys that were from my college fraternity that were film majors, and I bribed them with two 30 packs of beer to come fill. Uh, what film type of the, beer? Like Natty Light. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, like, <laughs> that's what fraternity guys drink, for sure. Fine, fine ales don't come in 30 packs. Definitely you know? not. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And uh, anyways, long story short, uh, I made up this whole video, made up an elaborate story to get her to dinner, showed her the video. The rest is history. She Look said at that. Yes. Yeah, well done. Blake, congratulations. That's good. Right. These are yeah, good stories. Yeah. This is really nice. Yeah. Addison, where's, where's Addison? There we are. Oh, our, our first female. Look at that. Come on, Jess. Come on. Jessica or cardio. We're the same height now, so it's good. What is the craziest <laughs> thing you've done for love? Crazy uh, romantic. Actually, give this guy a second chance. We dated back in college. Oh. And we were both rebounding out of pretty long-term relationships. Is that the, that's the thing to do in college, right? you got to yeah, kind of... It's like bit. going to class. You have to have the, the relationship, your first adult relationship, right? Yeah, so I feel like this was kind of our rebound out of our, both of our first adult relationships. Sure. Ended kind of poorly. Why? Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. <laughs> Tell us. He cheated. Uh, no, actually, no. Uh, you cheated. Like I said, we were rebounding. We were just... No, no, the first, the first relationship. Oh, no, I didn't, why no, did that one end? No, the first adult relationship. Why did oh, that end? Oh, we dated for three years. It just kind of faded yeah, out. Faded. No, no, no. Why did, uh, why did you give him a second chance? What did he do to screw things up? He was immature and yeah. kind of an idiot, and I was just kind of <laughs> over it. <laughs> Sorry, babe. I love you. You like uh, when you say immature because I I feel bad for guys at that you were what twenty at the time twenty one okay twenty one you almost have no you choice are, you but are you're immature kind of an like, idiot yeah. you're you're kind it of like a monkey like, you know making dates and then bailing last minute and uh-huh. I, you're like ready to go stuff but like that did did you have PlayStation to play <laughs> yeah exactly you're like, yeah yeah all right Madden. So, okay. so, so you're at the point where you're like I've given up on his immature ways but go ahead. So that ended, Mm -hmm. college ended, graduated, moved back home. Uh, We weren't in touch for three years, but we still kept the same friends. Uh, We just avoided each other like the plague, and we both (laughs) thought the other person hated us. Uh, And then last October... Wait, hold a second. second. So that means it ended pretty bad. 
It kind of crashed and burned. It was yeah. pretty, yeah. Was like pretty a big bad. fight at the end? Even he's shaking his head yes. Yeah, like, it was like terrible. A big, a big, <laughs> it was really bad. A big <laughs> now, did, you know, so three years goes by, no contact. Yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, so three years goes by, no contact. Right. Do you, and you say you moved back home. Did you both move back yeah, to Southern both, California? We're both from L.A. He's okay. from Manhattan Beach. I'm from West L.A. Where were nice. you in college? Sonoma State. Okay. Sonoma, California. nice. Yeah. Woo! Not a lot of applause there. <laughs> Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, so last October, my best friend was like, hey, uh, he's going to be at my birthday party. So just so you know, prepare yourself. Yeah. Right. So had to look good. Went yeah. to the birthday party. We kind of avoided each other. Be honest. How long did it take you to get ready that night? Like how many dr- times did you change your clothes? Redo your? Oh, ma- no, I definitely thought about the outfit yeah. for a couple hours, but it was the one outfit. It was I the one. Was very it was, you knew your chi oh, yeah. and the booty looked perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we were both at the party, avoided each other, kind of got to talking. And I was seeing someone at the time, but we were like, you know, we should get coffee and we have the same friend group. And we started seeing each other shortly after that. There and I go. think the craziest thing you can do is after such a crash and burn crazy breakup, give each other a second chance. Yeah, no, that is. It's beautiful. And I'm glad you guys look very happy together. We are. But that's, honestly, don't you think, Drew, that that's the only way you can do it is have a serious time apart. Like, if it's going to be relationship part two, it can't be, like, six weeks later. No, it's gotta it be. also can't be sort of this on again, off again. It's got to be just, like, we're done. Yeah. yeah. And, we're and off. it was and, definitely and, we're and, done. Yeah. And, and there's, there's sort of two versions. Whatever, you always worry that whatever broke you up, the first time is going to do it the second time, but by the same token, whatever pulled you together the first time can be yeah. sustaining the second time sure. also. So if you and, and I imagine if you can get past whatever crash and burn there was or really process it, you'll end up in a healthier place. Sure, much why not? Place. Sure, Good. why not? Thank you so much for the story. Beautiful, Thank you. beautiful. Yeah. All right, now we will take your calls regarding anything you want. Anything? That's right, anything. All brought to you by. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend premiering tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on The CW. Monday nights, 8 p.m., CW, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. We are here in front of a live studio audience. You can watch us at krock.com, at drdrew.com. My friends, this is Love Line. Uh, Thank you to everybody who showed up here in front of our... To be here in our live studio audience, thank you to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend on The CW premiering tomorrow night, 8 p.m. That's Monday nights, 8 p.m. on The CW, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. We were just um, checking our Twitter feed. It's nice to see people around the country and around the world, really, tuning into the webcast here, which is nice. Yeah, the Netherlands checking in. Netherlands, Toronto. We're, thank you guys for checking in with us. So We appreciate you being part of this. Uh, so. Let's see. Let's talk to Marshall. Hello, Marshall. How's your law? Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah, we're good. How are you? Good. So I'm calling because I've recently been with my girlfriend for the past uh, about two years. And starting about three months ago, I've been having thoughts of, for no reason whatsoever, um, breaking up with her. Now, I'm, I'm worried that this is a result of my, my parents' divorce about four years ago. And, no, uh, dude, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, How yeah. long you been dating her? For, for about two years. And you're 19? Yes. It doesn't have anything to do with the Wait, divorce. What, is, just, it he, what is, is it he's afraid of is related to the divorce? That he wants to end this relationship? Yeah, he's, he's thinking about breaking up with her. And he thinks it's because of his parents' divorce. No, it's because you're 19 and you've been together two years. I, I would almost wonder if the clinging for the two years didn't have more to do with the divorce than the desire to end it. Because at your age, relationships are supposed to kind of wrap up after, you know, a year or two, right? Yes. Uh, my question is that there's been... Like no, no, like there's nothing wrong with 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 our with our uh, with our like thing together. Like we 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 get along very very well. Is it just because my, of my age and that, that that's what happens? Or yeah, I mean, you you may not even be aware of the fact that you're turning into a completely different person. You and know? and things you you have no idea. I I you know I don't want to get any deeper than this, but it, it just except to reassure you that it probably isn't the divorce. I mean, that was the question you had. But secondly, when when at your age, relationships run their course and you don't really realize it. You know, it's hard to know when they've ended. and It's hard to know how to end a relationship because you've never done that. And you get in kind of deep and clingy oftentimes. And so I, I the point being, I agree with Maya, I wouldn't blame it on the on the divorce. OK. OK. All right. Um, is, there any, is there anything that I should look out for um, in regards to the divorce? I, like, I think, I mean. Depression. I, yeah. Well, I was going to say, be careful that. Because your parents got a divorce at, uh, like, a really important age for you, you know, I think, like, that 
junior high school, early high school age is probably the worst time for really catastrophic uh, stuff to happen. Uh, you don't think so? Uh, they're worse, but but you're right. You're right to watch. Because I just a, think that that's the worst time of your life. Period. Yeah. So you like the, uh, that's why I was saying depression because it's just no. you, you're un, unmoored a little bit and you're already un, unsure of things. But but here's what I would say: yeah, some uh, some people become avoidant of marriage because of the divorce. Uh, don't do that. And by the same token, when you do decide to commit yourself, make sure it's a real serious commitment because divorce will always be an option for you and your risk of divorce is a little higher because you came from divorce. That's all. Uh, hello, Kathy. Hi. Um, uh, hello. This is a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, ma'am. I just want to go ahead and um, just advise you. This has been happening for about two to three years. I've been... Um, throwing up like at least once a month, and I don't know um, what's causing it. Once um, a month? It, like at least that, or it could be as like four times. Okay. It, wait, it happens once a month? Are you sure you're not throwing up blood out of your vagina? How dare you? Is it related to your periods? Is it related to the periods? Is it related to your menstruation? Um, n no, actually, I haven't really, like, thought of that, but it just happens, um, randomly, and it's... Okay, but I'm asking, I'm, I, you know, you've not thought of it, but I'm asking, it, does it seem to be associated with the menstruation? Yes or no? Not a no. trick question. No. Okay. <laughs> and have you had this evaluated before? I've talked to my, my doctor, well, at the time, um, a pediatrician, and okay, you need to no, not like see a pedi. You're 20. Like must have been something that I ate. She's held 21? 21. 21. Stop seeing a pediatrician, number one. Number two, go see a gastroenterologist. I, I'm no kidding about this. Pediatricians are not designed, not trained to deal with adults, which is what you are. Okay? You get yourself an internist, and then you get referred to a gastroenterologist. You probably need an, you need an ultrasound to make sure you don't have gallbladder disease, and you need an upper endoscopy to see what's going on with your esophagus creating this vomiting. Okay? That's it. You heard? Okay. okay do that. All right. All right. Thank you. You bet Thank you. you. I guess. I, I mean, at first when she said once a month, I thought she was going to say once a day. But at first, when she said once a month, I was thinking, like, well, that doesn't seem very serious. But if I was always throwing up randomly once a month, that would be for years. If it's, especially if it's sudden and spontaneous, yeah, it could be a lot of different things. Uh, hello, Carlos. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. You live. You live, you live Carlos. Um, so my question is directed for both of you guys. Um, Mike, uh, I know you struggled with addiction with, uh, with meth. Yeah. And when I was in high school, um, I kind of got into it too. Yeah. And uh, got into it pretty heavy. I mean, I dropped out of school. I um, started selling and just really turned the wrong way. Yeah, meth and does that. Stories yeah, that involve, so and then I started smoking meth, don't usually take a turn for the better. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, but I stopped smoking meth. Um, I started when I was like 16, 17. Yeah. And I stopped when I was like 19 and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Almost 19. And uh, I kind of stopped cold turkey. Carlos, get I, right to it. What can we do for you? Um, I was just wondering if, it's, if that's healthy. Is that... Is it healthy? Yes, it's healthy that you stop doing meth. Yes, I don't care how you stop, that's good. And if you were able to continuously stay off it, you know, if, uh, you said this was what, like three years ago? Yeah. If you stopped cold turkey three years ago and you haven't continued use there, since then, there then is a subset of meth users that stop rather abruptly. In fact, there are some research protocols out there looking for people like you, <laughs> trying to figure out wh what that population is that stops with minimal or no treatment. There is a subpopulation. I, I, but I'm going to I was going to say I was going to say stimulants. Period. Like, you don't see people opiate based stuff. No. Do that. But never. You do, I've seen plenty of people uh, that I used to do blow and meth with that. Just stop. If they just stop. Yeah. yeah. Except, I'm going to bet Carlos is a drinker. Mm -mm. He, oh. Kind of. You yeah. smoke a ton of weed. No, I don't do weed. I just really? get, I just get alcohol. Oh, right. I hear Carlos yeah, drinking. So I don't. I don't. Yeah, I never so, liked weed. Yeah. So what we would predict, Carlos, is that the alcohol is going to kind of be the next problem. So you got to be really careful. Okay. 
Okay, thank all you. Right, all right, buddy. But then, uh, yeah, thanks for the call. I just feel, but then also, I just feel the alcohol. I, just, like, I, have, I know I, my peeps, man. <laughs> I have friends who were able to quit without treatment and and, and not be an alcoholic. I, right. I know. But no, I just, and my I, question I, is, is that, is this just a sign of sometimes people, they're 16, 17, and they get introduced to an incredibly powerful substance. Yeah, they're not drug addicts. And they're not addicts. They're not addicts. Yeah, like that's they right. Not addicts the way you and I think about addicts. Right. The, the general population doesn't know what the hell we're talking about when we say that. But you know, you and I know what we're talking about. Yeah, I was in Vegas over the weekend uh, having dinner with friends, and yeah. I was discussing it, and I said, people oftentimes, because I'm, I'm approaching my sobriety birthday. and Like 15 or something, right? Uh, 13, yeah, which... Good for you. You know, thank you. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and as that happens, you know, I, the, the time gets more and more. People are always like people who truly don't understand alcoholism or the disease of addiction. They say, "Well, after that long, don't you think you just have a drink with dinner?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, which is which is by the way, if you don't understand yeah. the disease, is yeah. a perfectly reasonable question. The problem is many addicts start to think that that's right. a reasonable idea. That's how they get into trouble. And I did too it early on. I mean, I certainly that yeah. was my reasoning yeah. for relapsing. I'm sure it yeah. was much deeper, but yeah. I thought, "Hey, I've gone this long. I clearly can." I'm fine. Have a glass yeah. of wine or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But it's it's truly like impossible to put into words, which is great for radio. <laughs> um, but like you can't there, there's there's no way to explain to someone who's normal how your left brain can look at something and know it's a completely terrible idea. You actually physically don't want to do something and you have no control over it. There's no and, way to explain that to someone. And it's the like, part you have no control over will suddenly take control over your thinking and convince you it's a good idea. Yeah. And you will think that your rational side is the part that has taken over. In can fact, it's add, the primitive side. Can, is there surgery? You know, no. The, no. Can you add? No. Can you add no. foreskin? Can you add foreskin if you don't have any? Yes. See, you shouldn't talk so quickly. So I was thinking about people get adult circumcision. Yes. What if I decided right now? I was like, you know what? I want to be. As God made me, yeah. and I want to add foreskin. Yeah. Good for you. Could you do that? They they have procedures where they can kind of stretch it out. Yes, okay. they do that. I would. Not so I'm in it. the city of sin, right? Okay. And I'm walking around, people drinking. What does gambling. foreskin have to do with Las Vegas? Well, because I here's my other bro science question yeah. for you. They got they're getting really good virtual reality, right? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing I love more in the world than drugs and alcohol. Yeah, maybe my kid, but like it's it's a it's a toss up. Yeah. Um, you're, you're laughing, but that, that's how addiction works. Like, that, I love one, yeah, so, cocaine. Right. I love smoking cocaine so much and drinking. I love it so, so, so much. You have no concept of how much I love and to drink and that's do what drugs. It, that's real addiction. And when you love that more than anything in life, including survival. But my life is way better yeah, yeah. when I don't do that. Yeah. But if now with the advancements they've made in alternate reality... Yeah. What if I could put on like Oculus glasses that yeah. made my brain think I had been drinking? Yes. But I didn't actually imbibe any substances. Right. I, I'm actually, I have no idea how to answer that. Okay. Except to say everybody I've spoken to that wears one of these virtual reality uh, devices, including myself, reports altered thinking and altered feeling states when they're done. Oh. And it's yeah, and so it worries me that it might destabilize alcoholics, addicts. It feel it felt to me like I'd been hypnotized, like I was asleep for a long period of time. I felt very relaxed and weirdly kind of out of it, but it felt really good. But I thought, oh, it, it, this might go a different direction too. Because I I initially started thinking about that, and then I thought, what if you recognize? And this is going to get dark, but I'm I'm asking <laughs> sincerely. Go ahead. What if you recognize? The audience loves that, by the way. It's late <laughs> night for them to have a sleep. It's all right. What if you recognize? Go dark. Like at like seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, that you were into children. You're, you're you had pedophilia. Well, you're asking a general question. Can we undo serious no, behavioral? What if you What if problems? you could do virtual reality to cure that itch without making them go and harm children? No, I understand. And maybe the, uh, and will there be other applications for other brain and psychiatric conditions? And I would think the answer is yes. I just don't know which ones. All right, or how? One eight hundred L O V E. See, every once in a while, I ask him. I ask Doctor Drew ten dumb questions a night. And off the air? They end up in a good place. And two of them, uh, usually, about 20%, have some value. Yeah. But the rest are stupid. Remember, it all came from him sitting in his room alone, contemplating his dad's balls like beard. before the show, <laughs> Like before the show, when I asked if you could strengthen your daughter's hymen to make it impenetrable. <laughs> that's, that's par for the course. 1-800-LOVE. With, with, one. with, a, with a incontinence device. Yeah, so device electrostimulation yes. and steroids to right make, to that area. To make the impenetrable To make a yoked out... 
swole, impenetrable hymen. And then you announced that that would be the name of a band. Impenetrable hymen? Yes, okay. <laughs> 1-800-L-O-V-E. 191 is the number. My friends, it's Loveline. One more break till Stinky Pinky. Yes. It's almost, it's almost time uh, for Stinky Pinky. You know, I want to put that, the bat signal out there, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Since we are here in front of a live studio audience, all thanks to Crazy X Girlfriend premiering tomorrow night. That's Monday night, 8 p.m. on The CW. Also so watch on. the live stream of what we're doing right now at uh, krock.com and drdrew.com. Do you want to try that one more time, krock.com? What did I say? krock.com. krock.com. Yeah, okay. uh, and for those of you around the country, that's kroq.com. Yes. Not like the word rock. Yes. Um, Oh, I totally forgot what I was going to dive into, but I had an important story that was germane to everything. Pinky, stinky pinky or nope. something? Oh, a bad signal. You said oh, not yeah. a bad signal. Yeah. Uh, since we're here with uh, friends of the show and a yeah. uh, beautiful live crowd, I was thinking, we got to get uh, Tupperware Crap Lady back. Oh, Kathleen. It's Kathleen, yeah. Like, I'm kind of, like, I'm really actually concerned that like, we hurt. burned a bridge. No, I'm hurt. Why? Well, I don't, why would she just stop calling? She used to call all the time and give us awesome stories, I'm, and then I'm she just hurt. stopped. I don't know about you, but I'm hurt. And here was a bunch of people enthusiastically awaiting her call. She could call tonight and rekindle the love. Do you, do you remember when we, the Naked Poet? Oh, yeah. That was from, from uh, Vancouver. I don't remember. But she Vancouver. got arrested on the air with us, and then we never talked to her again. Yeah. Well. She's like, stop. I got, there's, there's cops in my front door. <laughs> and we totally heard it. And they're like, yeah. open the door. <laughs> <laughs> she was not well. No. 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 <laughs> no. Uh, all right. Let's get to the phones here. Let's talk to Alyssa. Hello, Alyssa. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I actually have a question for both. Well, I'd like your perspective on something. Please go sure, ahead. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Anytime. Um, sorry. So, does being a young single mother, um, do you think that would make me, I guess, unattractive in the eyes of men? Being a young, single mother, does that make you unattractive to men? Probably to younger men, yeah. And not unattractive, but a little freaked out. Unappealing. They're a little freaked out. They, okay, because I mean, I don't do all too much, but I mean, you know, anytime I, I go out or something, you know, I might meet someone. And I usually look at guys that are, you know, in their mid-20s or so, more on the mature side, and I can't see that like Guys in their here, I'll your phone is breaking up. Let's I will say this: hold. guys in their mid twenties aren't typically, and I don't mean this as a pejorative. I just mean that that's the way it goes. They're having a very hard time figuring out their own feelings and emotions. It's how, how many guys almost impossible they, to be wait to be tuned in with another girl's emotions. It's absolutely impossible to then be tuned in with her child's emotions. No, and how many guys in your twenties would have been like avoidant of a, somebody who's a a mom? Hands up. Yeah. So, so most 100%, all hundred percent. Every every guy here. Is saying that you know, as, uh, from what I can see, maybe not the the Rasputin there went over to France. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but he's very, very but, passionate man. Yeah, I don't think he was listening. Rasputin. To be fair, but like Seamus <laughs> raised his hand. Did I he? saw okay, him. Yeah, he was it. tuned in. Um, but but uh, it's Rasputin. it's just too much for me. They don't want. It's not that you're they're unattractive. They just they don't want to hurt anybody. It's just too, it's too, they're not ready for that. You know. Well, I will say this. They like, know they know they're kind of animals, right? No. What? Well, okay. You know Speaking from ready. personal experience, you know it's not that I would think any less or find her unappealing. No, I just be I'm I was I am still cripplingly intimidated by women. Yeah. When I was in my early to mid twenties, I was impossibly paralyzed paralyzed by yeah. women, especially women that I wanted to talk to in a romantic fashion. Right. If then she's like, "Oh, I have a child," I'd be like, "Well, I'm not capable of this. Yeah, I'm right. totally incompetent That's right. in this situation. That's right. Let me move on and find someone who's in your thirties and has you, lower you standards. Might be able to sort of manage that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. My daughter today. So speaking speaking of being a parent. I think you told so, me this story, right? Yeah, I told you, yeah. but I did not tell uh, our lovely audience. So my daughter uh, is at the age where just like she is the worst person ever and destroys everything in my life, uh, brings down the quality of my life in every aspect uh, tremendously. But I can't. I, I love her so much. All I do is think about she's at that beautiful, cute age. She's a year and a half. So I went away to Vegas just for the night, and I was I was missing my wife and my daughter so much, and I just can't wait to get home. I'm sitting in my bed in the hotel last night. Can't wait to get home. I'm just going to run in. I'm going to hug my daughter. I'm going to love her. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Sure enough, fly home, go right in the house. She's butt naked. Uh, she's just getting out of the bath, and she's getting ready to take a, take a nap. 
And I was like, Magnolia, hi. And she runs over to me and she's like, blah, 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 like already totally not paying attention to me. And I'm like, no, 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 sir, please, babe. Look, look at Papa in the eyes. Come here. Look at me in the eyes. I love you. I love you so much. And I just, oh, I miss you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm talking to her in a very serious level. And, and, and as I'm saying this, she's crapping. Just pooing <laughs> all over the floor, right in between my legs. Big, nice, hot, and yeah, just the freedom of being a year and a half. Poo poo on the floor. Just you one of many messages to yeah. come. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Uh, hello, Josh. Hi. How's it going, guys? Uh, hello there. Long time listener. Love you guys. I love you. Thanks, more. Josh. All right. So I'm 19 years old. I work out often. I take, you know, pre-workout and protein supplements. But over the Swole. past, I'd say a year and a half, I've had trouble getting up when I'm with a girl. Now, do you have trouble getting a boner, or when you get a boner, it's not as hard? Or you, lo- it, or you lose it after a while? I lose it. Um, like, if I get hard, I pretty much have to immediately start going, or else it will go away. And, like, I and you're 19? To, what? And you're 19? Yeah, 19. Yeah, that's serious. And this is a new problem? Like, it, it's happened over, like, the past year and a half. I, I noticed it a, a year and a half ago after my first, like, legit girlfriend broke up with me on my birthday. Oh. And she was my first, like, first person I ever had sex with and everything like that. Do you yeah. have any trauma history? No, 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 no. Okay, like, okay, I'm just checking. Together, Is you know, the girl like you're that. having sex with now, does she have a fupa? Uh, it is, never relax. It's it, a fat it, upper uh, pussy uh, area. <laughs> You know how oh, sometimes no, no, no. girls don't have a pot belly; they just have it like between their belly button and their vagina. No. It's like a poof. No, she doesn't. It's called that. gunt I, in other parts of the country, <laughs> where it's not. Multiple different girls. <laughs> Drew just, just shot a booger out his nose. Thank you. It's, it's also been called pillow pussy, Doctor Drew. Oh, thank you, Mike. Thank you for all the different incarnations. That's I appreciate usually that. in in Denmark. Uh, was that Anderson screaming in the background? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, listen, uh, the f- are you on any medication? Uh, no, but I have, I tried, I started taking uh, natural test boosters to try to help me with the problem, hopefully. Oh, that's a bad and, idea. But I haven't really seen any major results or anything like that. I wouldn't that. ever do anything hormonal under 30. It's really not without supervision. But, but here's the deal. Uh, you stop everything, give it a couple of weeks. If this problem still persists, you're not anxious when you're with these girls, are you? Or do you feel uncomfortable with them? No, I feel uncomfortable with them when they're ready to go. And no, I'm you feel uncomfortable because you're having trouble, but is there anything, anything anxiety-provoking about these relationships? No, I just get nervous before I have sex. Okay, all right, right, right. Listen. Are you doing, like, the full battery of foreplay? Is there oral going on? Yeah, every, like, everything will happen. Like, right. even will so, wait, 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 wait. If you're getting blown <laughs> before you have sex, like, are you fine then, and then it's immediately when you're transferring over to the prime time, that's when it goes down? No, I'll, I'll start going soft if she gives me oil. A lot of times what I'll do is as soon as I get up, like, well, I'll just get straight to it because I don't want to go soft. All right, just listen. Here, here's your deal. Uh, it may be, in your age group, the most common problem is anxiety, and you're describing what's called the sort of anticipatory anxiety, which is the fear of it happening again is what makes it happen again. But it sounds a little more than just anxiety in your case. It's so persistent and so specific in how it's developing. I, I really would urge a medical evaluation first. Um, and sometimes medical treatments just to get your confidence back can be helpful too. But the first order of business, you know, particularly if you were a 30 or 40-year-old male, this would be a medical problem for sure. But at your age, it's important just to rule out medical issues. Get a prolactin level, thyroid, blood sugar, those sorts of things, neuro exam. Make sure there's not something that's... I understand that it feels emotional, but maybe something is making it that much more likely for this to happen that can be corrected, okay? 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the number. A special uh, a special love line, Dr. Drew, in front of a live studio yes. audience. They're beautiful and powerful people. What is and this supporting? Supporting Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, premiering tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Mo- on CW. Night. That's right, Monday nights. From here on out, tomorrow night is the premiere, 8 p.m. on The CW. And you can watch us live right now at KROQ.com, also at DrDrew.com. And uh, ex-girlfriend has a crazy ex-girlfriend, has a Twitter handle. It's at CW underscore crazy XGF. All right. That's right. And straight ahead, we're going to take your calls and play some Stinky Pinky. We are. It's all coming up straight ahead here on Love Don't tease me. Yeah, buddy. (laughs) 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 
<laughs> what was that? <laughs> we have a live studio audience here. Hello, everyone. They're Thank amazing. you, guys. They're amazing. Thank you guys for coming out. I know uh, it, it's Sunday out here in Los Angeles, uh, so I, it's probably not easy to trek all the way out here on a Sunday night, so we, we certainly appreciate it. Um, and we are going to play the world's greatest wordplay game in a little bit, but first we're going to take a call from uh, Sister Christian. Hello, Christian. Hello? We heard him for a second, and then he's gone. Chris, oh, there yeah. you are. What's going on? Hey, yeah, I was going to ask you guys a question. Yes. Mm. It, is that uh, I've been with my girlfriend for five years, so I guess you could say, oh, I've been with her since high school, and I've been moving back and forth. Like I've been, um, I went to Oklahoma, and I came back, and I've been here with her again. Uh -huh. So we've been doing long distance relationship, but now it's like this is the last time, and we're like, since I'm moving to Vegas, it's gonna be the last time we're gonna be together. And not only that, like we're like both we um uh, we're both like getting mad at each other because I'm I'm leaving, so she's trying to take like she's like oh I want to go with you to this and that, but at the same time she's like I'm always with her. Like, well, what's the question? Is there a like, question here? Yeah, it's like, how did I break up with her? Uh, hmm. And she's, li she's still living apart from you? Yeah, well, she lives with her parents. Okay, and he's what? 20. Yeah. Uh, you, you tell her. Yeah, you got to be swift and sure. You have to kind of man up. It, it's, people always tend to want to be uh, easier, kinder, gentler. And unfortunately, that ends up being meaner, brutal, and uh, prolonged. So what you want to do is be clear that, you know, this isn't working for me. I know it might come as a surprise, but... And I, just, I'm move I live in Oklahoma. We live yeah. in a different area, but it's just, I think we need to just bring wind this thing down. And then be super clear. Do not leave the door open and just be swift and, you know, just <clears throat> no more contact once you make the declaration, okay? Yeah, swift... Yeah, yeah. Guy. This guy doesn't know he's on the air. This is a new call. Hello? Hi, Jay. Hey, hey. Uh, what were you singing? You guys live. You live. What were you singing right now? I wasn't singing anything. You know, you were. We totally caught you. No, I was not singing. I was waiting to get on the line with both of you guys. That's what I was waiting to do. All right, go ahead. All right. Um, it's an honor to talk to you, Dr. Drew and Mike, but um, my question is. is my girlfriend is thinking about having an abortion. She's going to have an abortion on the 16th, and I want to, I'm supporting her in this whole thing. But you know, I'm starting as it gets closer. I'm starting to have, like you know, I would like her to have the kid, but I don't know if I should like should I tell. It would it be bad for me to express how I feel about this. Um, oh boy, this uh, is a very. Uh, hang on. <laughs> okay, let's just get to it. it. It's a very individual decision how you approach this. You have to okay. think about how you're going to feel afterwards if you don't say something, Ooh. if this is something important to you. I think you have to tell her. I do, too. I think uh, you have to tell her, but you also have to go in knowing that what she says goes. Right. You yeah. do, don't, whatever, even though you've been, you're honest and clear, you're also supportive and, um, you know, do, do, realize that this is a very tough decision for her, too. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. I understand. That's why I didn't want to make it any more difficult by. And well, I, don't want her to I, I understand like, that, you know. but there's. So that, it's an adult there's... way to think about it. I, I understand yeah. you're not making her... it more difficult, and then not saying how okay. you feel are two different things. Okay. okay. Because you know, uh, I think uh, uh, oftentimes, dude, just uh, thank you, Jay. But you know, women, I think, going into an abortion, are aware that there's going to be some emotional fallout. Yeah. Oftentimes, the guys involved are feel surprised. like they're immune to it, yep. and there's there's there is a sense of. Of loss, there's a yeah. sense of 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 you know di there's a difficulty following it, and I think that that would only be magnified if you knew that you never really expressed how serious. you feel. Okay, all right, dude. All right, good luck. All right, buddy. All right, what do you say, Drew? Is the time? Ahead. Go, all right. uh, Anderson. Now, I, hopefully, there won't be too much of a delay. I'm going to try to sing this live. Uh, it's time to play some Stinky Pinky. <laughs> It's time to play Stinky Pinky. It's a word game called Stinky Pinky. Everybody in the world they love Stinky Pinky. So it's time to play Stinky Pinky. It's a word game called Stinky Pinky. Everybody in the world they love Stinky Pinky. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um. Want to go to the audience first? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, get, get a microphone, Jess. Go. Play. Uh, go. Manu Bull, you're you're first. 
All right, this is pretty easy, but antisocial arousal. Rejection. Loner boner. There, there it is. is. Got it. There it is. All right, calls. Good description, Sue. Let's yeah. get to, let's get to, uh, oh, Diana. She's always first. Oh, Number Diana. One. Diana, go ahead. Cut wood and a quantity symbol. Lumber number? Yes. There, there it is. you go. Boom. Boom. Champion. You're, go ahead. You're cooking tonight. Latin American dance and a fast food value meal. Fast food value meal. Combo. Mc, Mc. Mambo combo. Yep. Yeah, oh. there it is. Boom. Are you ready for your challenge? Wow. Yeah, I'm ready for my challenge. That's, those both were good ones. Yeah. Okay. We got a serious crime, and the second word is Ms. Griffith. Meg Griffin? Miss Griffin. Miss Griffin. Like in, yeah, like as in uh, Antonio Banderas' ex wife. Oh, uh, Felony Melanie. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Well there done. it is. Woo! Woo! Great job. Woo! All right. Who's next in the crowd? Who has a stinky pinky? Okay. All right. A wild and crazy leave of absence from work. Radical sabbatical? Yeah. That's oh, there it is. Yeah. Dude, you're cool. You're, you're, that concussion rattled some stinky something, pinky Something in your got head. my brain loose. Yeah. And my brain's nice and limber. Uh, hello, Chris. Chris. Oh. Do you have to do it twice, Chris. like on the... Oh. Not, not on this nice setup. Chris, are you there? Yep. Go. All right. Uh, a, a World War II gun and a older woman. Uh, Foggy. Uh, I was Foggy. thinking, like, uh, what's, what are the geezer, machine, what are the machine guns called? With a I was thinking of, uh, Gatling, no. Yeah, no, that's, that's it's a, like Civil War. Yeah. Does anybody know? Is it Luger Cougar? Oh my God! Yeah. That oh, was all you. Yeah. That was all you. Woo. We can take no credit, sir. That was all you, brother. That was, what's the dude's name? I hope they serve beer in hell. Uh, Max uh, Tucker Max. Yeah, isn't that like Tucker Max's L- L- younger L- brother? <laughs> uh, hello, Lucas. I just did a podcast hey guys, with live. him. Strangely, nice. yeah. you live, Lucas. All right, Movie so doesn't hold up, by the way, Lucas. Character played by Sylvester Stallone. I'm yeah. hearing of these things. Hold on a second. Wait, a character played by Sylvester Stallone and? And a car company. Like the name of a car company. Rambo. Lambo? No. Rambo, yeah. Lambo? Yeah, well, that's not a name of a car company, you bag. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, hello, Tanner. Hey, what's up, guys? What's happening? You live, Drew. You live, Mike. You live, studio audience. There it is. There it is. They live. You live, Tanner. That woke him up. Oh, yeah. All right. So, imitation of an object or content Uh in motion. In motion. Uh, In motion. In motion. Velocity or acceleration. What was was the first word? Like a fake. Like a a, a imitation. Of an object. A phony. A... uh, Oh, come on. We, we got to get this you, one. When you, uh, my brain's not working on tonight, but when you make uh, counterfeit. Anybody know? Is it fake shake? It is not. Okay. It is synthetic kinetic. No, no, I'm, no. I'm going to rape you with the phone. No, that's, you're uh, dead. I hope you die. Didn't work. <laughs> All right. No good. First off, I want to thank the studio audience. Yes, thank you, great everybody. job. Next, I want to thank... CW for bringing us to this live studio audience and letting us do this live stream. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, again, premieres tomorrow night, Monday nights, 8 p.m. on the CW. See you and there. thank you to K-Rock and everybody who had made the live stream festival, er, uh, possible. Well done. In this crazy mix-up world that makes you think that nobody cares, we do. Be good, people.